Welcome back to Eligible Monster, where we cover the lore of your favorite video games and give you our opinions, like a bunch of idiots. Today we're going to be telling you the timeline for the official Doom franchise. While technically it was a soft reboot in 2016, it could also all be in one giant timeline. So guess what? We're going to tell you what happened from Doom 1 all the way to Doom 2016, and they give you a teaser about what you have to do in Doom Eternal. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you want more of your favorite video game lore told back to you dramatically. Doom the Original When his space marine company lands on Phobos, one of the moons of Mars, the nameless space marine is ordered to stay behind. Or, he is named Flynn Taggart, and he is under guard for striking a superior officer, depending on what you're reading. When his company is wiped out, though, Doom Guy must fight through the roving demons of hell and fellow soldiers that have become possessed. Fighting through the UAC facility, Doomguy finally arrives at the Anomaly, a strange glowing portal, and here the Doomguy faces two barons of hell, fighting them to death. Afterwards, he has no choice but to step through the portal. Yet this is no ticket home. He finds himself at the lost base of Deimos, Mars' other moon. The place smells like rotten meat, and the Doomguy knows the only way out is through. So he finds that Deimos is even more overrun by the demonic presence, and the UAC base itself has been altered by hellish powers. It seems the base floats above the very levels of hell itself as Doom Guy pushes forward, finally reaching the Tower of Babel, where he must fight the Cyber Demon, a grotesque combination of technology and demonic energy that rules Deimos. Doom Guy has no choice but to descend further into the bowels of hell, vowing to make the demons sorry that they ever heard his name. Fighting through the halls of hell, Doom Guy finally reaches Dis, the capital of the hell dimension, and here he must face off against Spider Demon, the one who led the invasion on the moons of Mars. With the creature dead, a doorway opens revealing the portal back to Earth. Doom Guy steps through but discovers that the demons have invaded Earth while he fought through the bowels of hell. The Marine fights back, struggling against the overwhelming armies of hell, but he discovers that his pet rabbit Daisy was murdered and he vows revenge. Though he continues to be an unstoppable one-man army, the forces of hell are too many, and they eventually overrun the major cities of the Earth. In Doom 2, the Doom Guy returned to Earth, humanity has fallen, you know, catching it back up. They have little choice but to evacuate the planet. Military forces attack the starport, trying to fight through to the ships that would take the last of mankind into the stars. But the armies of hell control the ports, and almost all the armed forces have been wiped out. Now Doom Guy must fight through the Horde, finally allowing mankind to escape. As he watches the last of the ships evacuate, the lone marine waits for his inevitable end. But he discovers that the Hell Invasion Portal is located in his hometown. Still pissed about the death of his pet rabbit, Doom Guy fights through his home, killing any demons that get in his way. When he finally arrives, he knows that he has no choice but to once again descend into the bowels of Hell. There, he comes face to face with the icon of Sin. He destroys the enormous demon, wrecking havoc in Hell, closing the portal to Earth once and for all. In Final Doom, with the portal to Hell closed and the demonic forces defeated, humanity once again begins to rebuild. The UAC does not wait long though, returning once more to experimenting with the energies of Hell on one of Jupiter's moves. Now they're prepared though, and when the forces of Hell try to invade, the Marines put them down hard. Time continues, and eventually a resupply ship arrives on the isolated moon. Yet it turns out that this is no human ship. It's a ship born of hell, made of metal, flesh, and bone. And it arrives to rain the armies of hell down upon the moon. The marine commander, taking a walk on the moon's surface, avoids death and destruction that rains upon his men. Now he must avenge his soldiers, killing his way through the demonic forces until he reaches another icon of sin, halting the forces of hell on the moon. Meanwhile, Back on Earth, the UAC has developed a technology that will close hell portals before the demons can invade. They work on this at a secret government black site, and when one portal opens, the quantum accelerator quickly closes it, stopping the hell invasion. But the demons will not be detoured so easy. They quickly open up seven more portals within the black site. When the quantum accelerator closes six of them, the forces of hell are too numerous, and they overrun the site. The global government calls for the marine forces to quell the demon uprising. A nameless marine who is enjoying a few days of rest and relaxation on the beach arrives, and he fights through the forces of hell, finally arriving at the gatekeeper who controls the portals into hell. With his defeat, the gate is closed and the invasion once again averted. Then we have Doom 64. With the invasion halted on Earth, the UAC once again looked to the moon of Phobos, orbiting the planet of Mars. Unwilling to unleash hell again, the site is nuked, 
hoping that the radiation will eventually kill off surviving demons. Time passes and the site is abandoned. Eventually, though, a signal is received that points to something surviving on Phobos, something that is resurrecting the creatures there. A lone marine is sent in once more to Phobos, having dealt with the demons before. There, he fights through the resurrected forces of hell and eventually into hell itself. He faces the mother demon, finally killing her. As he turns to watch the portal close, he vows to stay in hell and stop the demons from ever rising again. Next up, we have Doom 3. At an unknown time in the past, a new recruit arrived in Mars City, which is the entry point into the UAC research facility. Ahead of him is a member of the UAC board, Elias Swan and his personal bodyguard, Jack Campbell. As the Marine reports to Master Sergeant Thomas Kelly, he's quickly given the task of locating a missing scientist. Searching through the facility, the Marine locates the scientist in a decommissioned communications rig. The scientist is trying to send a warning back to Earth about the teleportation experiments that are taking place on Mars. At this time, however, somewhere in the facility, a teleportation experiment loses control and the demonic army begins to sweep through Mars City, killing and possessing anyone that gets in their way. The Marine must fight his way through the demons and the zombies, finally arriving at Mars City. And there he is ordered to meet up with another surviving squad of Marines and send a signal to Earth, warning them of the invasion. The Marine learns that Swan was trying to prevent the signal from going out because he's afraid that it will put Earth in danger. Even though the rest of the Marines are wiped out, the Marine fights his way through the communications array where he must make the choice of sending the signal out or not. With this done, he fights his way to the Delta Labs. Along the way, the Marine learns that Dr. Malcolm Berruger is behind the experiments and is working with the forces of Hell. The Marine learns that the UAC discovered the ruins of the ancient civilization underneath the surface of Mars where he found a weapon known as the Soul Cube, which was used to protect them from the forces of evil. The Marine is tricked into the portal by Bertrunger, and he finds himself within the bowels of hell. Fighting his way through the demonic horde, the Marine finds the Soul Cube and defeats the demon that is guarding it. He fights his way from hell, arriving in the Delta Labs with the Soul Cube. Dr. Bertrunger informs the Marine that a hell mouth is opening on Mars, which will allow an army of demons to invade, and they intend to use any rescue ships that arrive to make the jump back to Earth and invade. Pushing his way through the Delta Labs, the Marine finds a mortally wounded Swan who tells him that Master Sergeant Kelly is working with the forces of hell. Marine pursues Kelly and Campbell, finding the bodyguard also wounded and missing the BFG 9000 that he was carrying. The Marine then faces with the Master Sergeant, killing him and acquiring his BFG. Continuing forward, the Marine finds himself at the site where he discovered the ancient ruins and the Soul Cube. Here, he discovers the Hellmouth guarded by the mighty Cyber Demon. Defeating the demon, the Marine uses the Soul Cube to seal the gate into Hell. Reinforcements arrive, discovering the destruction. The Marine has survived, but no one can find Dr. Berdrunger, who has been taken to Hell and resurrected as a demon. Now we have Doom Resurrection of Evil. Two years later, the UAC notices an unknown signal from one of Mars' moons. A detachment of Marines is sent to investigate where they find an ancient device and they bring forth the forces of Hell. A single combat engineer survives and must fight his way through the gathering armies of Hell. He defeats three Hell Hunters, absorbing their energies into the artifact. The Marine then must journey into Hell where he meets the demonic dragon that Dr. Bertrunger has become. Using the ancient artifact, he rams it down the former doctor's throat, killing him and stopping the invasion. Now we have Doom 2016. At an unknown time, researchers for the Union Aerospace Corporation have begun testing an alternate fuel source on Mars, drawing and testing energy from a hell dimension. They've built the Argent Tower, which draws energy from hell and opens up the portals between the dimensions. During one of the expeditions into the hell dimension, a sarcophagus was discovered and it was brought back. Within was discovered a man, chained and trapped, clad in Praetor armor. The Doom Slayer has been trapped, locked away by the demons of hell for his rampage through their realm. One of the researchers, Olivia Pierce, makes a pact with the demons, and the resulting invasion quickly overwhelms the UAC facility as the demons begin a widespread slaughter. Dr. Samuel Hayden, the head of the facility, awakens and releases the Doom Slayer, believing that he is the only one who can stop the demons. As the Doom Slayer is fighting his way through the UAC base, he eventually faces off against Pierce at the top of the Argent Tower. But Pierce destroys the tower as she opens up a massive portal into Hell. The Slayer must fight his way through Hell, once more returning to the surface of Mars. And Hayden tells him about the Helix Stone, which can be used to close the well, which powers the portal into Hell. The Slayer travels once more into Hell, fighting against the demons that guard the Crucible, a key weapon. He returns to Mars, where he enters the well and uses the Crucible to destroy it, closing the portal. Returning to Mars, Hayden meets him, takes the Crucible, claiming that Earth needs the energy from Hell and they cannot stop, knowing that the Doomslayer would stand against him 
Hayden teleports him away, promising that they will meet again. Doom Eternal is set eight months after Doom 2016, where 60% of Earth has been conquered by the demonic invasion. With the Earth military helpless in turning the tides of the battle and the majority of the population killed off during the first month of the invasion, the Armored Response Coalition and allied nations have been created to preserve humanity and evacuate them into orbits. The Doom Slayer returns from hell to save humanity by embarking on a quest to destroy the Hell Priests. You are the Doom Slayer, and you need to go on that journey in Doom Eternal. There we have it. Doom is done. If I mispronounced anything, I apologize for that. I'm well known for it if you watched our last video. And don't forget, guys, you can subscribe and let us know in the comments down below what other video game franchises you want us to cover. We're already working on Division. We're already working on Final Fantasy. And we'd love to hear your opinions on more games you want covered.